Hi, John. I am so excited that we are finally doing this. It's been meant to be for a long time. So thank you for being on the show today. Excited to be here. Thanks. Yeah. I've, I've known about your work and followed you. I feel like for like eight years or something at this point. And I have always felt like I almost kind of known you through your work and, um, the imagery you use, even like your mark and color sense. Uh, I feel like there's some type of familiarity that painters can have like through, through these ways of communicating. So all of that to say, um, I can't wait to dive into learning more, um, about where your work comes from and about you as an artist. Right. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. So one of the ways I really love to start these interviews is by finding out more about the actual artist um, behind the work. So I would love for you to tell us a little bit about where you're from and how you first started getting into making art. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm from a small town in Northeast Kentucky. It's Ashland, Kentucky. And uh, it's where Ohio and West Virginia and Kentucky meet on the Ohio River. Uh, it's like the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains is what it says on Wikipedia, you know. And um, yeah, so I just grew up. I mean, it was a small town. There wasn't really much art around aside, you know, aside from things like um, Disney. I mean, that was kind of it, you know. I think we had a like a Kentucky Heritage Museum that we went to once where they had like quilts made out of human hair. You know, I don't know. <laughs> But uh, uh, yeah, and then um, really that was grade school wasn't you know like that wasn't there wasn't much art aside from you know regular things. But uh, but the Disney, you know, I drew a little as a kid, uh, like comic, like not comics so much as like X Men characters, um, cartoon like Disney characters, and you know those general just like copying the thing you know that you're looking at. Um, and then I went to high school obviously and it was like i don't i don't remember us making any art in high school like we i we had i remember the teacher and uh i remember the one thing i do remember is we had a, like a potter's wheel in there and somebody like a student just put a piece like a sheet of paper on there and just poured paint like did that kind of thing where the potter's wheel's going and they poured paint onto the potter's wheel and that's like all i remember really oh no <gasps> yeah you know, didn't get much out of that. Um, yeah. You know, and we had our, I remember the art class, we had another, a different art teacher that was, we were like tucked away in this like annex building. And uh, it was sort of away from all the other buildings. The campus was like a bunch of separate buildings on this hillside. Mm -hmm. And uh, that building was like, you know, you knew the principal was never going to, like nobody was going to ever come check on to what was happening in that building, you know? And uh, he was like, sort of a Bob Ross kind of character, you know, had a big beard and, and just really like the most mellow dude. And, um, and we would like go outside and draw. I do remember going out drawing around campus, like just drawing trees. Like we'd pick up a stick and dip it in ink and draw with like a stick you found, you know? Um, That's cool. I like that. <laughs> yeah, no, it was like interesting, you know, pretty early on to get like such a, you know, a, a, a somebody else's take on like what, you you know what you can use as materials i guess um and maybe that stuck around you know but um but mostly i was just drawing disney you know and then we would that class we would have there was a guy that played guitar and he would bring his guitar he was really good at guitar and then like a couple guys would sneak down to the cafeteria and like sneak some soda pops back to the class you know and like because we weren't supposed to have soda in class and like so that class was was that that was all it was you know <laughs> Was there, do you feel like some type of spark that kind of happened afterwards? Or are you from like an artsy family at all? Um, that kind of made you think, hmm, maybe I'll go on. Or, or did somebody look at your, the uh, the renderings that you were kind of making of the characters and say, hey, you've got like some talent. You should check that out. Not so much. You know, I do, now that I'm telling that story, I did one painting, I remember now, uh, of, um, I used, it was the elephants. I remember painting these elephants and um, 
they were they, they would send this thing in the mail back then called like animal fact file and they would send you like a couple pages every day mm -hmm. or every day like, like once a month or something of like a few animals and you clip them into this binder that you'd gotten and it would have like facts about animals and i remember i'd gotten this one with elephants and i loved the lion king you know and and so i did like a, a temper painting on paper that i still have and that was like I, th I still think it's a good painting weirdly and um i still have it you know um it's still probably like my mom's favorite painting i did because it's just like pretty direct you know yeah. and uh and but i did get a lot of like positive feedback i guess for what it was worth of that mm -hmm. elephant painting and then i tried to do one with giraffes and it was just a complete failure <laughs> and uh you know but uh yeah, and, and I mean, do students would have like other classmates would have me like if there was some kind of assignment where we'd like draw things, they would have me do it. Mm -hmm. Um, but it wasn't, you know, I I probably was just the only one that would do it. You know, it was, I was like good at it. I just liked doing it, and so, mm -hmm. um, but my I do come from my dad's a musician, mm. and uh, so that sort of lifestyle, like as far as like just creative things, um, uh. I was definitely like encouraged, you know, which was good. They'd buy me like huge watercolor sets and, you know, like, like and there's like little packs that were like, you know, water, like watercolor, color pencils, you know, like a pencil sharpener, an eraser, you know, maybe two types of erasers. Like what? You know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I still have those, like some of those sets, you know? Um, and I, that was, so, yeah, they were super encouraging. Like my dad was in a, uh, so like I said, he was a musician and he has like a must he still has his mustache he still plays music he's like 70 now plays oh. drums and sings yeah in like a classic rock band um like covers and they have originals and and uh so they always you know they thought it was cool you know they were like you know and i would do like my brother was in a band so i remember like his friends asking me to like design a, a logo for them you know in high school and um it was terrible but you know well, you know, it's it's interesting. Uh, John and I were were talking before we got on to this interview about coming from kind of a similar background. And when you're talking about the Disney characters, um, you know, I, I grew up where there there wasn't museums. Like people didn't go to museums or anything like that that didn't exist. And uh, as an adult, like what I've started to call it because I had trapper keepers, and so I call it like trapper keeper aesthetic is like kind of where my color world and everything comes from because like we, you know, we didn't have this other stuff. So we had like the animal files and, you know, like, like this type of graphic stuff um, that we could pull from. And I find it interesting that, that you had that and then you have this like musician background and creative support um, because in a way I feel like how you move forward, um, and some of the things that, that you've kind of talked about in your work or that kind of inform who you are kind of, um, speak to that a little bit. And so I guess my, my next question would be, you ended up going, um, to Savannah college of art and design. How did that path kind of look? Were you like, okay, I'm going to go like study art. Did you take some time off or what happened there? Yeah. Um, so I actually went uh I, I was engaged in in high school or like right just after high school oh um, wow cool. and she was like two years younger than me so like when i graduated like we were in high school together then i graduated and so there was actually like this time where i was like i wasn't sure what i was going to do um art definitely wasn't a thing i was thinking about um and i was thinking about a family you know it's like that's mm -hmm. sort of people marry their high school sweethearts a lot you know or they or people get you know pregnancies happen, whatever the thing is. Um, and not, not a lot of people leave my town. It's about 20,000 people at this point. Even back then, it was back then it was like 27,000, but it's dropped off a lot. Um, but for me, I was like, I'm going to get married. Like I was, I was like, I need a job, you know. Um, I was a uh, very like, a, a very like uh, hopeless romantic too, you know, and like, it was a horrible relationship. So many <laughs> fights, like way more, so dramatic, you know. I was listening to the Counting Crows. I was listening to Sarah McLaughlin. Yes. I mean, I still do, but uh, but but now I know how to like you know, deal with those emotions in a different way. Yes. And um, and so yeah, so we we were gonna get married, and anyways, I went to uh, I was like, well, I'll stick around. There was a community college in town, and I was like, well, I'll go there and take some gen eds. And I was 
going into a physician's assistant program. I just basically just looked up on the early internet, you know, that like, like what, what can make a fan, like what is enough money for a family, you know, and then found a list of jobs. And I was like, okay, that pays pretty well. I was good at school. I was good at math and, and science and chemistry and all that stuff. And so I started taking the two years of gen eds at community college. And I took, I did take a painting as an elective or like an art class as electives here and there. Cause you had to take electives. I was like, well, might as well do something I like. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I, <laughs> I, you know, I would take, I was taking like medical terminology from Greek and Latin. I was, t I had like calc at like 8 AM, you know, and like full load and I was working full time. Right. Wow. I was, yeah, I, I didn't realize this. That was like a, it carried over from high school and I didn't remember this, but I was talking to my mom recently and she was like, you were always like pulling all nighters in high school, like studying and, you know, and like just doing your homework, all, you know, I was just like a good student, but, and so I guess that carried over, uh, into that, but you know, that I was getting, like, I was, I was like making straight A's in all those gen eds. So I was like, oh, this is like, for sure, I'm going to be like a physician's assistant. Um, and then, uh, the fateful day came when that girl that I was engaged to, I mean, her name was Tiffany, of course, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and, uh, she, you can bleep that out later, but she's, she's not online. So, um, <laughs> but, uh, she, uh, she saw this guy play like a bush. It was a talent show no. in high school. No. <laughs> this dude did a cover. He did a cover of a Bush song, that glycerine song. The gliss, I was going to say, was it gliss? It, it was. It was yeah. glycerine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Tiffany. Tiffany I mean, Bush and glycerine. He had long hair, you know, wore like a cool jacket. And I was like, he just didn't care. You know, he was like, yeah. like stereotypical, uh, probably a nice guy. I don't know. You know, but uh, uh, he was doing that. And I was like really into rollerblading. <laughs> at the time <laughs> i still am but i was like you know i was at the park like skating backwards and like doing sp like loopy spins you know and like <laughs> skating on one leg you know and like like i was a goof you know and uh and you know that's like not the same thing you know yeah you know yeah. i mean i did skate on half pipes and jump down handrails and stuff but like safely i wore pads you know and like this guy's like <laughs> Probably you were responsible. Piercing. I mean, you were like pulling all nighters to get this like degree, taking on this responsibility while still being responsible and rollerblade. I mean, like it, it seems like you were very, very had a vision and driven in it and like going to accomplish it in a safe way rather than um bush covers. <laughs> 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 Which I will admit, I listened to that song back in the 90s or whenever it came out, you know. Um, I might have to put it on later just to reminisce a little bit. But, uh, hey. you know, like you you seem like somebody who's always, um, I don't know, taking it like, like you are a prolific painter. You have a lot of output of work, it seems like. And so like a very driven person who who puts their eye on the prize, which is um, getting the task kind of done or something and being good at it, um, even then, you know? Yeah, I, th I was definitely very disciplined, you know, back then. Um, and there is a period in my life where I wasn't. And, uh, and during that period, I like, uh, well, basically I was just drinking a lot. That was in New yeah. York. But mm -hmm. every other... Uh, part of my life in New York and then in uh, towards the tail end of grad school but um mm -hmm. and that'll get in the way you know if you're not doing it responsibly and I was not and uh but yeah but for the most part like even through so that was community college we broke up uh and then I was like well, what am I going to do right like I, I don't need a family like I'm not having a family now like that's yeah. like my thing right and so now what am I going to do? And I was really enjoying those elective art classes. And so I was like, I really, and I was getting like, I was, I started doing, oh, I, I had, at some point I'd saw, I had seen a, um, like Nick at night must've gone off TV, you know, and, uh, there wasn't streaming. And so then I watched, I, I ended up catching the tail end of a, an A&E biography documentary on Picasso. Hmm. And like, all I knew of Picasso was like his abstract stuff. And I didn't really care about it too much. Right. But then mm -hmm. I saw that he was 
you know, I thought the, th the thing of like, well, he just can't draw. He can't paint, right? Mm -hmm. Like he can't look at the thing and make it look correct, so to speak. And then I found that he was like a child prodigy <laughs> and like he was like 12 <laughs> or you know, he was like 15 and was like, you know, getting into these, you know, his his dad was like a an academic, you know, professor or teacher. And uh, so he was just bored, you know, and I, and I was like, oh, this is so interesting that like he was like this super, you know, I mean, all the horrible misogynistic things about him of course and he's but he had a confidence you know which and to like just make his own mark like not um historically but like like physically to like mm -hmm. create his own language and like to believe in it and um and it made it really it made art more exciting to me to know that like you can you don't have to like recreate like an mc escher drawing or like you know like Dali's surrealism, like, oh, like you kind of get what those are. And then you like, as a early, you know, high schooler, you, you like are interested in the fact that you can make things um, that don't appear in nature or, you know, in the natural world. And so I took that bit of like those surrealist, you know, those kind of guys, those people doing that kind of work. And then thought about like, well, Picasso is making his own marks, maybe thinking about that stuff too, but also doing his own thing altogether as far as the actual, uh, the uh, visual language. And uh, and I'd also, it all kind of culminated because then I was I saw this movie called Great Expectations mm -hmm. with um, the like, I think it was like 1998 version with uh, Gwyneth Paltrow and uh, Ethan Hawke, right? And did yes, I, was, I love that movie. You and guys, Don and I are like of the same era, like ever. Thing. so yes <laughs> it changed my life like that movie i saw that movie just caught it randomly you know uh, and the so it's, they, they retell the story basically where it's a painter that's from florida and i sort of related to that he's like from a fishing town i'm like i'm from like coal country and then he goes to new york and he gets like a benefactor and you know and but he's making all these beautiful the, the artwork in it was beautiful and it was like these drawings and of these like portraits that I'd never seen before and like these sketchbook drawings that they show in the movie and I was like man this is like either Ethan Hawke is an amazing visual artist you know uh, but I'm gonna wait till the credits to see like what's going on here and then and during the credits they're showing like all these different like images as well like like scattered in these beautiful watercolors and and uh, you know I had a lot of watercolors so like. My mom had bought me this like Looney Tune kit, you know, that was like Looney Tunes. And it was like the size of a kitchen table. And I was like, okay, I got that. I have that material already, you know. And so I got really in and I looked it up and his name is Francesco Clemente. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's still a painter. He's a contemporary painter. Uh, he was part of, and then I, you know, did some, I bought some books and, and uh, did a little research. And he was part of the Trans Avangardia, which are these like Italians that came over to New York in the 80s. And so he he did shows with like, Basquiat and he was friends with like all those guys like Basquiat and Warhol and did like a three person show with those two and but like that whole 80s New York he was like a one of the darlings like with Schnabel and all those but um but I just like got really and his work just is so poetic and like quiet at times it's like funny at times he also dives in like I was just really like so excited about painting right like like more than I'd ever been um and he also he 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 bounces between styles um, where he'll do like a watercolor, but he'll do like oil paintings. And then some things are just like text and stuff, like, like things look like drawings and, um, and more abstract thing. And I just was really like, well, that's what I want to do also, because I don't want to be like pigeonholed into like one thing. Cause I have a lot of interests and I think all that stuck around anyway. So that was just community college. I sort of just started doing a lot of portraits and, um, and uh, got good feedback and then decided, OK, I'm going to go to uh, undergrad. I'm going to actually apply to like college that's not community college. You know, as you were talking about that, I'm, I'm on your website right now looking at um, your work and you talked about like not be being pigeonholed um, into into one thing and how you really respected that and this artist that you saw in it and it does make me think of you and that's something I've always really respected in your work is that you successfully kind of work in different areas in terms of um, kind of how you're building imagery a little bit and I find that 
that can be hard. Like artists either really struggle to do that and they can't pull it off or it becomes very naturally to them and they easily pull it off. And you seem to be in that camp right there where, you know, um, you kind of easily pull it off. Um, and I think maybe one other thing, and I, 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 we can get into it in a second is maybe it's because your palette sometimes kind of holds things together in a way. Like you've got this really great palette that I always think of when I think of your work um, with these not pastel colors, but there's like a softness sometimes to them. But like right now I'm looking at the Pieta work that you had done, you know, um, and then, then some of these other like reclining nudes that are happening here um, and the landscapes, which are beautiful, but they hold together. So can can we go back to, um, you decide you're, you're going to go to college and then you go to graduate school. What happened after graduate school for you? Like, where were you and what did that kind of look like? Yeah. So, so yeah, I went to undergraduate state school and I did a study abroad program there too. And, uh, and that was, you know, like I learned to paint a little bit. We did like life drawing, which is, you know, I didn't have any of that background. So that was good. Then moved on, went to study abroad, saw like amazing museums uh traveled around while i was over there and i was in austria and uh traveled on the weekends so paris rome florence prague you know, munich and then um that was just like a five-week program ended up getting into graduate school applied to savannah applied to, applied to a bunch only got into savannah college of art and design in savannah georgia and um so ended up there was like I had a couple of years between undergrad and grad school where I was like, wasn't quite sure what I was going to do, and um, and then during that interim, uh, my younger brother uh, passed away from an, an overdose. Sorry. Thanks. Yeah, and um, so that was two thousand four, mm. and uh, he was a year younger than me. We were really close, and that was kind of a turning point in like what. I didn't realize that, you know, obviously at the time, just trying to like, that was the closest, you know, I lost a grandparent before then, but um, that was like a whole thing, you know, it was really hard on the family. And, you know, of course, and, uh, and I got into grad school and I went to grad school and I was just like, I got into the painting program there and I was like, I don't know, like all I can think about is like how fragile life is. Right. And, and, uh, but also like, I still had like a sense of humor because like, I'm not sure if I mentioned earlier, but my dad has a mustache and a perm, right? <laughs> you didn't mention the perm, but. Okay. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, he's a, you know, and, and like I, my whole family's funny. I have a bunch of brothers, I have three older brothers, a half brother and sister. And my biological mom is also like funny. And, and my stepmoms, you know, we, like everybody, like everybody has a good sense of humor. Mm -hmm. So then I was like at this weird point where it, it scad. Uh, they introduced the idea of having a concept to me, which I had never heard that word in relation to art. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huge, huge thing. It's like you're you're doing a thesis, you know, like, you know, I didn't I, the way I work is like the way my mind works is like kind of the way this this uh, interview is going. is like I have trouble focusing on one thing, like in, in a way that's concentrated and not like there's not like offshoots. Right. And so to, to have a concept and to be like, that's your like backbone of everything, your through story. Right. And, uh, you know, so then I, I struggled through grad school. Like it was hard. It took me longer than it should have. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I felt confident in the work I was, I mean, there was a lot of bad work, but like, I think a lot of the work was good, but it didn't fall into these like certain guidelines they wanted for you as far as, um, like you had a 15 hour review, a 45 hour review, you had a committee and you go in front of your committee, you know, it's pass fail, that kind of thing. And if you fail the review twice, like the 15 hour review twice, then you're out of the program. And so like, I would, f yeah, uh, high stakes, you know, cause you, it's expensive, you know, you've moved your whole life to there. And, uh, and, um, and so I failed the 15 hour review the first time. And then the second time passed, failed the 45 hour review the first time pass the second time and then you have like your thesis thing and um i also had to take a conditional review which is like even before those to make sure i had all the conditional foundation courses yeah 
That is so much for the painting. <laughs> I mean, and some people might be listening and be like, oh yeah, of course. Like I know my, my experience is not like that. I don't, that sounds just really, I don't know, miserable in a way, mm-hmm. mostly when it comes to like, just being, you know, creative output and trying to figure out what you're doing with your brain to your hand with idea. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, yeah. So I'm glad that it worked out though. (laughs) I mean, I still wait to like get a notification that it didn't work out. You know, I'm always like, I'm gonna get an email. They're gonna send me an old timey letter. They got lost, you know, like, I can't believe it. that. Yeah. I so good that I didn't walk when I graduated because I was like, I'm not going to pay for that hat and everything, you know, because like I wasn't going to pay for it. And uh, so I'll have that fear sometimes too, like, oh, what if? <laughs> like, what if? Right. Um, but you, you, and the, the thing is, is you were going into that program coming in with grief, you know, of um, like this terrible loss that you know, I can't, I can't imagine losing a sibling. I haven't gone through that. And, um, what that, what that does, you know, in terms of thinking like, here I am with this 15 hour review and also confronting like what life really is and how fragile it can be. You know what I mean? Like that weird dichotomy of like these rules and we're going to do it this way. And it's like, actually, that doesn't really matter. Um, you know what I mean? Like that had to be a lot to balance, um, going in there, you know? Do you feel like it impacted the work you were making? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that, you know, any, I mean, just as trying to be an artist in general is like, I mean, I I had a professor actually at grad school and he's uh, the last day of class. uh, He was an amazing, he looked like a cherub. He's an amazing, amazing professor too, teaching like color theory. And and, uh, he was like writing his own book. And it was at the end of class, he was, he was like, what you are doing he just wanted to like, thank us all for like being, he said like, you're all so brave doing this, right? Like it's not going to be easy. And I remember like, I got like teared up in class. I was just like, man, that's like, I never thought about it that way. It was like, this isn't the easy path. Although it seems like the easy path you're doing like liberal arts or whatever, you know, like you're like taking the, you're playing with clay, like you're doing this fun thing, but the making the living part is like, not the, is like the hardest thing. There's no set path for that. Um, mm-hmm every road like every person's journey is different for that and you're also like burying your soul so to speak you know you're like putting everything that is important to you like as your like say you're an accountant you know like you can maybe separate that from like who you are as an individual you know i mean people love numbers and like i did too you know but like it doesn't like like you're probably not you know taking everything that happens in your life every news story every song that's not going to like feed what you are putting your passion into Mm -hmm. and what you maybe what you choose like what you feel is important isn't important to somebody else and that's going to you know that's you know later on down the road like a gallery doesn't maybe doesn't care about the environment you know don't care about the environment they don't they're they're not like maybe they're like like when you're applying to things you know there's always like a theme and you're like oh i don't make work about you know global warming so like or, or maybe I only make work about global warming and that's very gone, like on a limit, but it's very, it's still important to everybody, you know? And so then you're just like question, you're just constantly in a state of, I'm not good enough. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, you know, I lost my brother, I'm failing reviews, you know, and, uh, and just broke. And um, like, I would double over asking if it affected me, just my work too. Like I was, we had like our own studios, the graduate program, we had like 10 by 10 foot studios. I remember laying on the floor, like curled up because I was having like, like stomach something like convulsions. And I was like, like pooping blood, you know, like things no. I'm I'm assuming was like ulcer stress related, but it's never happened oh. since grad school. And I didn't even like, I didn't have insurance, you know? So like, I was just like, well, that's just part of, I was I'm just getting old. Like I didn't know what it was, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and then getting back up and like making and having a review or making work, you know, you learn you learn a lot about like what you can make it through, you know, which yeah. I think is a super important lesson. And things are hard, you know, um, but the reward is like also amazing. And so, I you know, I think that it did. Obviously, the work I was making was very was about my brother. I mean, I was doing portraits of him, but I was also making work that was 
um, overly like romantic work, maybe to turn my back on the grief, you know? Yeah. Well, it's interesting you bring up the romantic part again. And I really want to talk about the opioid portraits that you still create. Um, but you had mentioned earlier that you were a bit of a romantic as well, you know, like that's just kind of part of who you are. You're like this funny, you know, kind of romantic guy who has drive to get stuff done and obviously very resilient going through everything that you went through in that program, um, you know, at that time in your life. Um, but a thought I had is like, you know what, the work that you're making now, and I'm looking at some of them, the, the color, I love your color. I keep talking about that, but I can't help it. I like, I'm a color person, um, is, uh, the idea of like, that side of you coming out, like humor, I feel like is in some of your work. And so is a bit of like romanticism, even in some of your landscapes. So could you talk a little bit about um, how you feel like that might come through in your work occasionally, like the humor or the romantic part? Yeah. Uh, thanks for the color. Uh, coming from you, that's like a <laughs> huge compliment because I'm obviously very drawn to your color as well. And I do feel like a kindred, a color kindred spirit. Uh, with yes. your work sometimes yeah. i'll see you like po pop up on instagram and i'm like i think it's my feet I, i'm like did i post i'm like oh that's not mine i'm like oh, that's not <laughs> mine i'm like i don't know i have some old work that i like forgot about or like <laughs> i you know i used to sleepwalk maybe i did something weird you know in my sleep i posted a painting and so i uh, love that I love, yeah. what when did this oh okay. yeah 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 uh, <laughs> but i definitely steal your palette sometimes and i'm sorry <laughs> Uh, if you were, I would, that would make my day because like I said, I, right now I'm looking at this, um, this painting and it's like a landscape with this green and orange. And then this, like, there's only one little sliver of purple that kind of slides into it. Um, and so I just, I really love like how you utilize color and, and not just the color you're using, but how much you use of it. Cause I want to say again I feel like you're one of the most prolific painters that I've seen in a while like you have a major output of work like I feel like all the time like oh my god there's like another painting a new painting awesome you know um and so that that's pretty cool to see and like I said we when you were talking earlier about this idea of not being pigeonholed into one thing you have like these different series that you seem to explore and some of them um, like I said, do have that humor in it. And then some of it has like this romantic side and some of it has um, almost this other like spiritual side to it. So yeah, how like, um, and I'm almost now more even curious about if if there is sometimes like kind of like a spiritual element that's in your work that you kind of are responding to. Thanks. Yeah, I think that for me, as far, so the humor, I think I've gotten less I've, I've been leaning less on humor, humor in my work. Like yeah. I had pieces in grad school that were like, uh, kind of thinking about like, uh, like, a, like Lenny from Of Mice and Men, like how he would pet the rabbit too hard. So I had this whole series, like he loved the rabbit, but pet it too hard, right? Hug the girl, you know, squeeze her to death. And so <laughs> like those romantic notions, like I had a piece that was a, it was a portrait of me, very realistically drawn, tiny portrait of me with my pants down taking a dump but wearing sneak but wearing sneakers like nude but wearing sneakers and it was on this huge panel i'd built like 50 something by like 48 inches oh my god the figure was like maybe three or four inches and then underneath it was just like a big pile of poop and the but the title was uh i want to be with you until i make this much poop <laughs> as like i was thinking about but but in that the humor was like i'm thinking i did several time sort of time based using time as a material like mm -hmm. the idea of time as a material. Um, but that was like the, that those, the humor of that became like too much like um, the far side, mm. you know? And it's like, also you have to like, really like be, I didn't want to have to think that hard to make up a, to make a joke and to make an image that's going to work with that joke. Right. Mm -hmm. So now the humor is more subtle and sometimes it's just things that I think are funny. Like, be it, I'm using a color that's a horrible color to you. And it's like just hard to make a color work. And be like, okay, I'm going to use that as like the central color in this painting and try to make something that's maybe not the most hideous, like the background of the Golden Girls painting you've ever seen. Um, <laughs> and so the jokes are like a little more like subtle in a lot of ways, but, but yeah. a lot of times I just put the joke in the title 
And I'll, yeah. so I'll have an image and probably like ruin the image to somebody if they read the title, you know. I've had galleries tell me to change. It's like, they're like, they're like, can you just make the title shorter? I answer why I was being like, okay, like, don't say the word like poop in a title, you know, don't, you know, like that kind of thing. Like, don't say bazoinkers, you know, <laughs> or like whatever the thing is. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think about the titles till after typically. So, but, um, yeah. But yeah, humor has always been part of it, um, and uh, and uh, yeah, and I, and I do just try to like paint what I'm interested in. I think that's why I make a lot of work. It's because the uh, yeah, you know, it's funny because you're talking about like you know, can I make this painting out of this like really ugly color? And I think that's like where it becomes like almost like painter jokes. You know what I mean? Like I'll do something in a painting, I'm like laughing to myself, and a, a non painter would be like, what? <laughs> why is that funny and i'm like no it's hilarious <laughs> like, yeah. I'm yeah. um yeah. yeah so i think that that that's really funny and then these titles that you're putting in where where your gallerist is like can you just make that shorter yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, oh okay i get it i get mm -hmm. it but i think like ha having that type of lightness that you have with like the titles or the jokes really balances out with like I don't know, just the, the seriousness and the weight that I feel in a lot of your paintings. Um, and I'm looking at work from like 2023 and 2024 right now. And it feels like there kind of has been a little, you know, a shift towards, I don't know, like I said, like almost this, like this questioning that's happening in it um, in terms of like, like I said, I don't know, like the spiritual element I feel like is coming up. It might also be because I'm like studying um, spiritual abstraction right now. It's like a major interest of mine that I'm like trying to dive more into. So I might be just reading it through that lens. But like I'm looking at this painting, um, Postcards to Maine, which I really like, um, where it's like this head looking up and there's these stars. And it's like, I don't know if this is a speech bubble, bubble gum what it is last breath, you know? Um, and I guess what I'm trying to say is with the spiritual element, um, it almost seems to kind of be speaking about what we started out talking about, which is like grief and like fleetingness of life. Is that, do you find that in there? Um, or am I just like totally coming out of left field? <laughs> which is <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think, well, so, to speak to the spiritual quality, you know, I don't, um, I don't like have a religion that I, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't raised in the church or anything, mm -hmm. you know, so, but for me, I did take a cross country trip during the pandemic and we drove, like I'd converted my like 2003 Honda element into like a micro camper, um, to drive to Palm Springs. Yeah. It's because, like, that's a dream of mine. P.S. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. such a dream. Yeah, it was a month mm -hmm. month trip total, and um, and we stopped uh along the way. We just camped the entire way, right? And um, it was we were going to see my grand my girlfriend's parents in Palm Springs, and they had some health issues, and uh, so their doctor was like, they can come visit you during the pandemic, because it's like early on. They're like, but they no flying, no hotels, like no don't be around people. So it was completely self sufficient, like trip basically like out of my car um showering and everything right and so uh but i saw uh so much of the united states which i hadn't seen like the west like the grand canyon we stopped there you know and i thought about these like david hockney paintings i'd seen and and like of course like like the desert just you know like there's like george o'keefe and all that you know all the things you'd seen and like oh this is like i get it why people are so like inspired by this landscape and and then you know everything else. Everything else we saw, just amazing. And um, and so that became like the spiritual quality of just nature, right? Like that. And thinking about how my brother had passed away, and and like how he'll never see, never saw any of this, right? And all of that has it's still in my work. Like he's still in my work, and I'm still losing friends. Like I lost a good friend the other day to opioids, you know, and. And uh, so I think that the spiritual, like the color, I think comes from uh, in death, there's a celebration of life, 
right? That's why, like, like I was just down in Mexico and like seeing all the like, you know, Memento Mori and like all the Dio de los Muertos, like all that kind of stuff. Like, that's the better way to be, I think, for, and like the opposite of when I would go to funerals, you know, in the in the states or you know in Kentucky. Um, so I think all of that is like somehow in the work, and like there's like subtle jokes, like painter jokes. I like material, like all that stuff is trying to like merge that into one thing and try not to overthink it also overthinking it you know and so it's like there's so much to it that um that's why i make a lot is because like as i'm working on a thing that leads to a new thing and i don't uh i think that recently i've stopped looking for answers in work like i'm not looking for like an answer i'm not looking for a fact which i think i used to do now i'm just looking for hope mm. um and that's like for me a really fun way to to paint because in the end i'm not like i don't want the facts because the facts are usually like sad and dark and they're about war and like you know life is going to be over soon so i'm just looking for hope like what like what's the good thing you know that you can find and so the work i think is a constant battle between those two things of like ask like asking a question not looking for an answer but finding a reason to ask another question and, you know, another day to fight, fight, you know? And so that's, that's, I think where my work is now. And so some of the more like mystical looking imagery is, an, is unanswered questions. You know? mm. I love how you phrased that. That was beautifully put, you know, not looking for the facts. So we have the facts, you know what I mean? The facts are not wonderful. <laughs> the facts, there's like this end but rather looking for hope, you know, looking for something that can carry the work you, the creator forward in it is, is so important. Um, and I'm really sorry to hear about your friend. And I think, you know, one of the projects that you've done, um, the opioid series is incredibly important, you know, um, for remembrance uh, and also just raising awareness, you know, um, not that it should be on you to raise awareness, but because you are witnessing this, um, and I think, you know, uh, the areas that we're from have a, such a high drug addiction rate and people that are on opioids for a ton of different reasons, a back injury <laughs> that it starts with yeah, or you know, escapism, um, whatever it might be, um, so are you continuing to, will you, do you think you'll continue working on that? Like, you know, until hopefully this, this ends. Yeah. Um, yeah, I actually did another one a couple of days ago, uh, mm -hmm. for a, a guy that I'd grow, grown up with. Um, well, I mean, of, of him, he lived like two doors down from a, a good friend of mine and I'd see him every day. Um, but yeah, it's an ongoing series that it happened by accident. I just kind of reached out. It was a whole series of things that led to me doing the first one. Somebody was trying to commission me to do a painting and I was like, I, I don't, I feel weird charging. Right. And then I did that one painting and I just gave them a digital version of it and asked if it's okay if I keep the original. And I reached out on Facebook to like my hometown community and just wanted to know if anybody wanted portraits of somebody they'd lost toward, towards addiction. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, I just got flooded with messages. Right. And then people were sharing that. And so like my hometown, the general tri-state area, uh, people just and they always wanted to tell me a big story about the person right um either their battle with it or like how you know just great moments they had with that person and these like were spanning back like 30 years right or 20 25 years of like people they lost all the way up until like now you know they like people some people had been clean for 20 years and had one relapse you know and people like there was one somebody sent me a double portrait it was like a father and a son who both died from opioids um i think in the late 90s it was like in early 2000s the overdose rate was 10 times the national average right where i live and uh you know so like that's it's obviously super important those portraits are a bit um they're they're heavy to paint like i have to be in the right mind frame for that and i usually do them in the morning i start in the morning they're 12 by 12 the same format so that i can like take some of that the decision making out of like the cropping and things and um I'll, and also people were sending me like really grainy old like actual mm -hmm. photographs right and they're like in the background at a restaurant you know like i'm zooming in um, but i kind of like that there's a bit of um 
uh, translation in my painting them. So it's like multiple layers of like, of memory. It becomes like a, a distant memory, but uh, I try to use like bright colors um, to give it maybe more of that celebration of their life. And, uh, you know, so it's, yeah, it's, it's a heavy, it's, it's ongoing series though. I think I'm up to 28 right now. Um, and I have more like kind of them just trying to like work up the, the, the courage to paint those, you know, and those are, none of those are for sale, but I always send people the images of them. And, um, I had a show where we had them printed up like really high quality prints and just gave them out for free to people that came to the opening. And, and I'm actually doing a show of those. I just found out, um, in, uh, March and through May at a, like a yeah, um, so I haven't seen this new batch, you know, I haven't seen them all together. So it'll be interesting to show those together. Um, where is that show going to be? It's at the Gadsden Museum of Art in Gadsden, Alabama. Um, and uh, it's a two-person show um, with Miriam Omora. And she's she shows with the collective I show at, show with uh, down in Birmingham. And she had asked me if I wanted to be a part of the show. So I just found out like, I don't know, maybe a month ago and the show's coming up. But, you know, luckily all that stuff's like, I have, it's shown before. So I don't have to like, I'm not stressing about it. But um, But she has these like missing people works mm -hmm. that she's done with like these like these like weaving uh transfer things so uh, i think it's a really so they're all portraits too so it's a it should be a good show you know, i'm excited to show with her and it seems like it'll be a nice you know cathartic thing hopefully um yeah, yeah. congratulations on that show that sounds awesome and it sounds like the perfect person to be showing with you know in terms of the subject matter and you know this this is a weighty subject matter here. And um, what I find interesting, and, and maybe it is because of your personality, which you said, you know, you come from a funny family and there's humor. Um, maybe that is why you are able, you know, to create, create this work as that balance, because I know that that's gotta be, that's a lot to take on, um, but such a tribute and so necessary to you're collecting everything together to, 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 to be able to show visually, to take up space, you know, um, which I think is, is so important. And, um, we'll definitely have to share images from the show, uh, over on the podcast over on, I like your work on Instagram so that we can, we can, you know, get that out there. I'm kind of just like envisioning even like you working with a poet or something to put these images, like in a book, because they, they, it's, there's a lot of power power in what you're creating. Um, I want to ask you about one other part of your work, uh, which is like this repeating figure that I see that I'm always like, oh, I wonder why he paints that, um, which is the Pieta, you know, um, like it's a very specific thing that you've chosen to, to paint. And I referenced it actually in a painting um, that I made out of 2020 talking about, you know, COVID deaths and whatnot. But um, I'm just so curious, like uh, using that imagery and I love like right now, I'm actually looking at one because I love this uh, treatment here. Um, it is it's Tennessee Waltz with the purple and the dots like I love, <laughs> I love that surface. I'm like, it's so good. It is so, so good. Um, so, yeah, I'm just curious about the repetition and the, the symbol use in it. Thank you, Erica. Um yeah, that's been, uh, that was a new, I was actually doing a drive home from Kentucky back to Nashville. It's about a six hour, five and a half, six hour drive. Um, and, uh, I was just, you know, whatever, just thinking, you know, had downtime. It's like shower thoughts, you know? And I was like, oh yeah. And that, yeah. All right. And the <laughs> images came to me and I was like, I mean, you know, the images, they are ready. Right. But, uh, so I just use like, like Michelangelo, Michelangelo's, uh, I almost said Michelangelo, and then I hated myself for it. <laughs> I grew up on Ninja Turtles. Like, that's hard for me. I, I did too. But yeah, uh, that, so that image, you know, I was thinking about obviously my mom losing her, her, his, her son, which is, I can't imagine what that's like, right? Like, I don't have kids, but my dog, the second we got her, uh, not, not to compare the two, but like, I was like, she's going to die before me, right? That, now that's, that's, kind of you know that going that's part of the deal when you get a dog but like having a child's not that's not the deal right not supposed to be and so I was thinking about that and then of course like that imagery of like you know 
like Madonna and Child and like and that you know and you know, I saw that sculpture in uh, in Rome when I was there, um, and uh, so I was just like, well, I can you know, there's so much going on in the world with you know COVID was also you know that just happened and all the wars and all this you know I was like, how can I take this shape, this iconic symbol, um, and you know, just like repurpose it basically for like to talk about more personal things and also just help me try to to meditate on this stuff and to like mm -hmm. process it. And so I started these, they're um, uh, like shaped plywood pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm working, I work with them flat on a table, which I hadn't done like that in a while. Um, besides, you know, working on paper and stuff, but canvas is typically on a wall. And there's something about sitting down and like leaning over this and I'm using like a Dremel tools and different like carving tools to, sh to like etch in the general, sh the shape of the, the line work of the sculpture. Um, and then, and then whatever, like those pieces, I'll start prepping the actual surface. And then I've, and then what I'm listening, you know, listening to the news or, or reading things or just, you know, looking through photographs, whatever like happens, they're very much a process based process based pieces depends on where i'm at too um i did three or four of those at a residency in in mississippi uh, mm. on a farm which was great but um i was like in a barn and there were like legit like chickens walking on them and there were like horses walking by like, like these cats and dogs it was like charlotte's web you know <laughs> and like right and the day before i went to that residency yesterday the day i was leaving town there was a school shooting in nashville yeah. and Right. And so like I was like packing the car as that was going on and I'd already had these pieces, the, the shapes cut and I didn't know what I was going to do at the residency. And like, so of course, one of those pieces um, ended up being about that. And so I think that's the Tennessee Waltz piece that mm -hmm. I, I kind of forget the title. Um, uh, a lot of them are named after musician, music things, but um, and one's, you know, about the, the Colorado nightclub, the shooting there. And, um, and so I use... Um, like basically current events uh, seems to be what those are about um, for the most part. And, uh, and the materials, like there's a lot of, I'd gone like the, the spots and things and all that. There's like a lot of st like stickers, like star stickers that you get as a kid. Like mm -hmm. I went to like thrift stores in Mississippi and I found all these old coloring books that were like already colored. And so like I collaged all those into it, like just thinking about like, the children that did, like, did those and you know, all that kind of stuff and these old like toys like Sesame Street toys all that stuff is like embedded into that surface and then you know manipulated to you know to make everything work but um there's a lot of glitter and things in that too but um but yeah they're they're really like cathartic um and they're physical which I think I don't exercise as much like there's something that's you know maybe I'm like you know getting a lot out that's like that's in me for those pieces um uh, I don't, you know, I don't know, they don't really fit in with a lot of the other stuff I do, but somehow I think they do. It's like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You actually made me like teary talking about those, like getting those coloring books. Oh, I can't even talk about it. I will like, <laughs> um, lose it, you know, and thinking about, um, who gets to finish a coloring book page and who doesn't you know, um, based on things that are happening around them or politically in a lot of different areas, you know? Um, and yeah, I was, I was curious about it because it does stand out and there's such a power in this image, which is so interesting. Uh, this idea of like this large kind of mother figure with this grown man yet child, like just draped across that, I mean, is it just so incredibly powerful on so many levels, you know? Um, and it makes me just think about like what's ingrained uh, in us just as humans and what we respond to. Um, but yeah, it's a really powerful piece. It's it's really beautiful. Uh, so thank you for for sharing more about that and what, what led to it, you know? Um, and then the Charlotte's Web happening around it. Oh, um, to lighten it up a little bit. Yeah. Hearing about yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> um, you. so, so John, I would love for you to share with our listeners a, um, maybe some inspirational message that you've gotten as an artist or something that keeps giving you hope as you move forward. Um, 
to somebody who's listening that might be looking for something like that? Sure. Yeah. Um, I think for me, what has been useful, uh, two things. One is, uh, listen, I had a professor tell me to listen to vinyl records while you're painting. And I have a, I worked at a, here in Nashville, I've, uh, I'm now a full-time artist, but that didn't start until 2020. And I was, mm -hmm. I was working at a, a bar here that also sells vinyl. And so it's called Vinyl Tap, like, a, you know, <laughs> right. Oh. Great place. And, um, but you know, my vinyl collection obviously grew a lot working there. And I had a professor say that, you know, if you listen to vinyl while you're working, then you have to walk across the room and flip the record, right? Every mm -hmm. three or four songs or whatever makes you step back from your work and then you can like take a break, you know, take a breath. Right. And cause I know, you know, especially if you're working larger, just or whatever. Um, so that's been really useful. So I have a, in my studio, my other studio is like outside, basically it's like in a garage, but like I have a, a, rec a vinyl, like a record player in there. I have one in my indoor, like s smaller space. And, uh, you know, so I have to get up, flip the record. And so that's been really useful just to like s slow down a little bit, you know? And, um, and then the other thing is I think that, which is hard for me cause I am, I make a lot of work. Like it's the only thing I want to do. I have to make, you know, it's like, it's, that's not healthy. Right. <laughs> and so that cross country trip has sort of led to me, we were talking before we started, uh, but about travel and things and, it, and even if it's not, you know, traveling across the country or whatever, um, I think for if you're making work about life, you have to make time to live because that's what the work is about. You know, like that's like, that's one of your important materials. Like your my number one medium is life. Right. And so, you know, the people you meet, the relationships, um, you know, nature, you know, the, the farm animals, like all that stuff is going to make its way into your work. And if you're not out there, like taking a, a moment, you know, take enough time for yourself to like not make work, then it just becomes, I know I always feel stressed out when I see people that are always working and never, I'm like, you know, I do the same thing and I'm like stressed out, you know, and I'm like, mm -hmm. I just think, you know, it's okay to like not make work for a minute, mm -hmm. you know, um, and recharge, you know. I think that is incredibly important. And I'm glad that you're sharing both of these things, which is like a cultivating a healthy rhythm in your work life as an artist, you know, like flipping the record, stepping back, <laughs> taking a beat to travel and be with people you love, because that's the other thing, you know, is one of the facts of life that we do have is that it doesn't last forever, you know? And so spending time with those that are important to you and that feed your work, um, is, is, uh, pertinent, you know, <laughs> and just healthy for us as people. Um, so I want to say thank you, John, for sharing that. Um, can you share with us where we can find your work and more about that upcoming show that you have? Uh, yeah, uh, you can find my work on Instagram at John Paul Kessling. It's, you know, you know, you can spell it. Um, and then, uh, <laughs> and then the website, we'll, we'll link it too. <laughs> Sure, thanks. And then uh, the website's just johnpaulkessling.com. And then, um, you know, I showed a couple of galleries, Red Arrow Gallery here in Nashville, Wheelhouse Art in Louisville, part of Ground Floor Contemporary in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, and then, yeah, I have that show coming up at the Gadsden Museum uh, in Gadsden, Alabama. Uh, it's a two-person show that's March 5th through May 5th. Uh, I'll be showing at Tiger Tiger. Uh, first time there. That's in Asheville in a group show uh, in April and May. Um, I'm doing a, a month long residency in Savannah, uh, May into June, uh, which I'm excited about. Uh, I haven't been back since I graduated 13, 14 years ago. So that's cool. <laughs> uh, and there, and I'll have a solo show there in July. Um, they're having me back for that. Uh, group show at Red Arrow in August. Um, two-person show with Emily Pfaff, uh at Wheelhouse Art in Louisville, September and October. Yeah, excited about that. And then uh, I think a group, a two-person show, I think, in October at Ground Floor Contemporary. So in the South mostly, you know, at this point, but yeah. In the 
south, but like constant. So <laughs> it's a lot. It's yeah, really it's all awesome stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm excited. You know, it's like I have to make sure my calendars, you know, pay attention <laughs> nice to and it at least. Coordinated, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm getting better. I need to. You know what? I need to order a studio planner out from you because I was. That's not. I'm not like that's legit. Every time I hear the ad, I'm like, I should do it, but I'm always like not near you know yeah yeah my credit card or whatever i'm like i'm like whatever the thing is i'm like i'm like i gotta get that that sounds useful oh the studio planner i know i i need to break mine out because yeah the the consistency is good but this is such a great lineup i really am hoping to make it to you and emily's show congratulations on all of that and tiger tiger is such a great space um, and that show that's happening at the museum is a, is powerful so everybody that's listening we will We'll be um, sharing all of those links on our show notes. We will be sharing it over on Instagram. I like your work podcast. And um, John, this has just been a pleasure to talk to you. So thank you for taking time out of, out of your studio work, because I know you work really hard and are in there. So just thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I've been listening forever and uh, <laughs> telling everybody about it and love your oh, work. Thank and you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thanks, John. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.